Anaphylaxis is defined as a severe and potentially life-threatening allergic reaction. It's quite rare, but it's one of those things that rapidly escalates and hence requires prompt assessment and management. The main features of anaphylaxis can be broken down into airway, breathing and circulation. From an airway perspective, laryngeal edema can lead to an upper airway obstruction, giving rise to strider. Strider is defined as an abnormal, high-pitched sound heard mainly during inspiration, and it's caused by a narrowing of the upper airways. This is what it sounds like. From a breathing perspective, a wheeze may be heard when oscillating the lungs. A wheeze is a high-pitched whistling sound heard mainly during expiration and is caused by narrowing of the lower airways. And this is what it sounds like. In addition to a wheeze, the patient may desaturate and may even become cyanosed in severe cases. The widespread release of vasoactive mediators in anaphylaxis can also cause shock. This will manifest with hypotension, tachycardia and a prolonged capillary refill time. Other features that are typically associated with anaphylaxis but may not always be present include facial flushing, angioedema and urticaria. The Resuscitation Council guidelines for the management of anaphylaxis was updated in 2021 and is as follows. So the first step involves administering 0.5 ml of 1 in 1000 adrenaline intramuscularly, usually in the anterolateral thigh and assessing for a response. If after 5 minutes the response has been insufficient then a further dose should be given. There's a few other aspects of management that should be uh, considered during this time in addition to administering these doses. Uh, first of all, if there's an obvious trigger, uh, such as an infusion of antibiotics, this should be stopped and the cannula should be removed. In an A to E manner, measures should be taken to secure the airway um, and apply high flow oxygen if required. And if the patient is hypotensive, the patient should be laid flat as tolerated and IV fluids should be admi administered. When establishing IV access, sending a sample to check the mast cell tryptase level uh, should also be considered as this would help confirm a diagnosis of anaphylaxis. If after two doses of IM adrenaline the patient has failed to respond adequately, this is considered refractory anaphylaxis and it requires starting an IV adrenaline infusion at a rate of 0.5 to 1 milliliters per kilogram per hour. If there's a delay in establishing the IV adrenaline infusion, then you can continue to give doses of IM adrenaline every five minutes until that infusion can be commenced. The infusion should then be titrated based on clinical response, but it's also important to make sure that you monitor uh, the patient's heart rate, blood pressure and ECG, uh, just because uh, filling them up with adrenaline can lead to quite significant rises in blood pressure and heart rate and, and can also precipitate arrhythmias. A few other things to bear in mind, um, an arterial line may be helpful for continuous blood pressure monitoring. Uh, other considerations include intubation if the airway compromise persists. Uh, bronchodilators may be useful if there's an element of bronchospasm contributing to the patient's clinical picture. And antihistamines may also be used for symptomatic relief. The main point to highlight with these updated guidelines is that it focuses primarily on the administration of adrenaline. Antihistamines are considered a third-line option that isn't part of initial management and is primarily recommended for the management of persistent skin symptoms. Steroids are no longer recommended in the routine management of anaphylaxis.